After the Iowa debacle, voters, myself included, are incredibly terrified that we will have a repeat with the Nevada caucus as it quickly approaches. And unfortunately, the Nevada State Democratic Party isn't really giving us assurance that there won't be any type of shenanigans. Because it's not just the errors and the incompetence that made Iowa the disaster that it was, but there was also the brazen conflicts of interest. I mean, the company, Shadow, which was used to tally the results of the Iowa caucuses, got two different payments of more than $20,000 from the Buttigieg campaign. The parent company of Shadow, Acronym, their CEO, likes Pete Buttigieg, is a Pete Buttigieg supporter, and on top of that, her husband is a senior advisor to the Pete Buttigieg campaign. So there's this conflict of interest that wasn't addressed, and going into Nevada, they should be going above and beyond to assure us that we can trust this vote. Because, I mean, if you want to have a democracy, voters have to believe that the process is legitimate and fair. But Nevada isn't doing this, and they're not doing that because we just discovered that there is more conflicts of interest that maybe we should be worried about. Because as journalist Samuel Finkelstein pointed out on Twitter, the Nevada Democratic Party just hired a paid Buttigieg organizer to be their voter protection director. Now, as you can see here, her name is Emily Goldman, and she worked for Peace Campaign between October of 2019 and February 2020. But as of this month, she went on to work for the Nevada Democratic Party as, <laughs> once again a quote-unquote voter protection director. Now, after this was all discovered, you know, Samuel explains that she locked her Twitter account immediately so we can't go through her old tweets. She scrubbed her employment history from LinkedIn, and he writes, for posterity, her position as voter protection director still shows up with the Google search. Feel free to check it out yourself. Now, here's the thing. After we just saw the connection between Buttigieg's campaign and the Iowa app that made this entire process a joke, they should be going out of their way to assure us that we can be confident that whatever result is produced is fair. But when you have this conflict of interest, I mean, even if we're not putting on our tinfoil hats and claiming that there's this conspiracy to take down Bernie Sanders and rig the election in favor of Pete Buttigieg, the optics alone should give them pause and think, you know what, maybe at this point in time we shouldn't hire a Buttigieg staffer after they kind of have a bad rap right now, but I mean, they are just brazen. So you have this revolving door between the Buttigieg campaign and Democratic Party, but it goes both ways because someone who worked for the Nevada Democratic Party started working for Pete Buttigieg as of August. Because as Beth Lynch points out on Twitter, the former executive director of Nevada State Democratic Party, Travis Brock, is now the national caucus director for Pete Buttigieg's campaign. Now, even though he's been with the Buttigieg campaign for a while, Obviously, this is still a conflict of interest. So, I mean, at a bare minimum, they should at least make sure that the optics are good going into Nevada. But, I mean, can anybody trust this process? I am incredibly skeptical about this process. And I just, I, I'm honestly shocked that they're this brazen, right? Like, I am not alleging that they're trying to uh, impose people in uh, or insert people from the Buttigieg campaign in the Nevada State Party to steal it, because if they truly wanted to steal the election, they don't necessarily have to do that, right? But I mean, it's just a matter of the optics. The optics are absolutely terrible. Like, if I, the Humanist Report, I, I hired someone from the blaze, wouldn't that be bad optics? Even if he was saying everything that I wanted him to say with regard to progressive politics, just the mere fact that this person came from the blaze, isn't that a little bit skeptical? Wouldn't that communicate to my viewers that maybe this person have has some underlying biases and shouldn't be trusted or at a minimum I should question what this person says so I mean these are things that normal Americans normal people think about but the Nevada State Democratic Party they don't even care they just saw the Iowa debacle and now they're saying you know what those people on Buttigieg's campaign bring them in we need their help because they seem like competent people I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. Now, there was there was a lot of outcry, obviously, when this was discovered, and a lot of people CC'd the Sanders campaign on Twitter to let them know that this is a little bit sketch. And Sanders campaign manager Faz Shakir responded saying, appreciate the concerns here. We've spoken with the Nevada party, which has assured us that this individual does not have decision-making authority over the caucus count. Please know we are working hard with the party to get every assurance that mistakes of Iowa are not repeated. Now, I'm glad that they're at least aware of the situation at a minimum. 
But with what just happened in Iowa, we can't take any chances. So if I were the Sanders campaign, if I'm part of the Warren campaign, the Biden campaign, the Klobuchar campaign, I'm calling on the Nevada State Democratic Party to sever their ties with Emily Goldman. Because this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. But yet, nothing will probably be done. And let me just ask you this, just as a viewer, ask yourself this. Are you confident that Nevada won't be a complete and utter shit show? Because, you know, as soon as we learned that the app was part of the main reason why Iowa turned into the dumpster fire that it was, they announced we're not going to be using that app after all. Although we're learning that, you know, instead of using an app, they will be using a quote, iPad based caucus tool, otherwise known as an app. Oh, and according to that same article, they are still trying to figure out what to do in the Iowa caucus aftermath. So that's reassuring. Listen, as I said last week, the bare minimum that voters expect from the state Democratic parties and the National Democratic Party apparatus, the DNC, is just for them to count the votes and tell us what the numbers are. But we don't even have confidence that that's going to be the case, right? Like, I am absolutely anticipating another disaster in Nevada. I'm expecting the worst, hoping for the best. But when we have the same types of people going in and out of campaigns and into the Democratic Party and state parties and whatnot, it's this revolving door with the same incompetent people that keep messing up, and yet nothing is being done here. And even though the optics are horrible... It is what it is. We just have to accept it. So I don't really know what to say at this point. Whatever I find out, it's not even surprising. But we'll get to another video where I'll look back to 2016 to tell you why I am so afraid of the Nevada results. Because the Nevada State Democratic Party has had it out for Bernie Sanders since 2016. And if we uh, learned anything... It's that we cannot trust the Democratic Party, be it the National Party or state parties, because they really are working against the grassroots. And it's to the point where I am 100% convinced that they would rather have Donald Trump as president than Bernie Sanders. Because, I mean, think about this. Donald Trump allows them to fundraise, right? They can sit back while he's president, throw their hands up and say, well, I wish that he, you know, signed all of our bills that we passed into law, but, you know, we can't do anything right now. So in other words, they get to sit on their asses and fundraise off of Donald Trump. But if Bernie Sanders were president, things would be different. They'd have to act. They'd have to vote on policies and expose, you know, to voters what their true ideological leanings are, right? They'd have to show their cards. And they don't want to do that, which is why, like, everything that... I'm seeing tells me that a lot of Democrats, not all of them, but a lot of them who are associated with the Democratic Party in an official way, they're more comfortable with the Trump presidency than Bernie Sanders. Now, with that in mind, what we have to do as Sanders supporters is be extra vigilant, make sure that, uh, one, we overwhelm you know, the, these polls, we show up and we vote like hell. And on top of that, we make sure we get out more people than we originally anticipated we need. Because if we want to win, as Kyle Kalinske says, we have to overperform. We can't just win by one or two measly points. We have to win by five to ten points. So that way, if there is any fuckery or shenanigans, we have a little bit of a cushion, right? So, you know, that's all I can do is I can give you this information and you do it with it what you will. And of course, you know, people want to attack me as being a conspiracy theorist, but I'm just telling you that the optics here are bad. I'm not asserting that, you know, this is evidence that there's this conspiracy to take down Bernie Sanders in Nevada. But what I am telling you is that the optics are horrible and I don't trust the Nevada State Democratic Party. And even if they may not be acting in bad faith against Bernie Sanders, I am not confident that they are competent enough to just give us a basic caucus where we get the results after it's done. But we'll wait and see. I would be absolutely thrilled if I'm proven wrong here, but I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting them to bungle this in, in some way, um, but we'll just have to wait and see.